Okay, so now we're ready to take into account the influence of applied point moments. So we have our beam arrangement here again, and we have everything stripped off of it except for the moment applied over on the right hand side. And so let's just sort of think down through how this calculation, how this process is going to go. Right, so we'll start off thinking about reactions. Right, so let's first of all say that xm in our case xm is going to be 17 meters so that's defined at the start and we have the moment m is going to be a positive 50 kilonewton meters all right then so uh, the first thing i typically tend to do in a situation like this is take the sum of the moments about a point and i'm going to choose point a because that's what we've been doing up until now so i'll say the sum of the moments taken about point a must equal to zero clockwise as usual are positive all right so what are we going to have then well we're going to have the the moment on the end here is going to feature straight away now it's a clockwise moment and so we'll represent it here as just an m here instead of putting the number in so we can say m it's positive moment so it's positive m now the moment generated by the reaction at b is going to be a negative so it's going to be negative vb times the lever arm uh, between a and b which is just going to be b minus a but we'll just put down la for vb okay because we kind of know we've looked at this already that all that is is the distance b minus the distance a all right and so if we solve for VB, that's going to be the equation that we write over in our Jupyter notebook. So now we can very quickly, almost by inspection, we can just determine an expression for the reaction at A. So the sum of the forces in the Y direction must equal zero. Upwards forces are positive. And again, by inspection, you can see there's only, there's no external point loads applied to this thing. And so the two reactions must balance each other. And so VA is going to be equal to the negative of VB. And that's the other the other expression that we're going to implement within our within our notebook. Right, so that's the first part done. We've dealt with the reactions and it's you know it's very straightforward. Um, the next thing that we're going to do now is think about the shear and the moment, and that's going to be even more straightforward. Uh, because as you know, the shear is not going to see any direct influence of that moment. We'll elaborate on that now in a second. Right, so what have we got? Shear and moment. Well, the first thing to say is. It's one of the nice things about this. As we progress through writing this notebook, we'll find that we've, we, we, don't, we only have to do a task once. And then when we go and look at a different type of, of load or a different type of action, we'll see that, oh, we've already written most of the code that we need already. And we only need to make minor tweaks. And so an example of that would be that we've already written the code to take into account the moment and shear effect of VA and VB. We've already written it. So we're just going to copy and paste that uh, from uh, the last time we wrote it when we were looking at point loads. And so then all we have to do now, the only addition with this particular type of loading, this moment, is we've got to think about what it does to a shear and moment diagram. Now, as I've said, the applied moment doesn't have a direct influence on the shear force diagram. Now, of course, it it obviously has an effect on the reactions and the reactions then influence what the shear force diagram looks like but the moment itself doesn't appear directly in the shear force diagram and then in terms of the its effect on the bending moment diagram well an applied moment will just cause a step change in the bending moment diagram so let's and i'll just for the the purposes of completeness here i'll write down um i'll just say the influence the influence of va and vb that's going to be the same as for the point load and we leave that there and then we'll just say the influence of the moment well we'll say there is no direct influence on the shear force diagram notice i'm saying direct influence right because obviously the fact that there's a moment you know it it it, it means that we have reactions and the reactions affect the shear force diagram but the moment itself doesn't have a direct if you like influence and of course, it causes a step change, a step change in the moment diagram. So that's about all of the notes that we need to take. It's about all the different things we need to think about. We can now jump over to our notebook and actually implement all of this. Okay, so here we are over in the notebook, picking up pretty much exactly where we left off after the previous video. So what I want to do, as I said, as I keep saying along the way here, we're going to follow the exact same um, procedure, if you like. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up here and define an empty, an empty array, initialize an empty array for our point moments this time. So let's just copy that down and then change that to point moments. And it can still be an empty array. We'll just say 
point moments and we're going to have a location and just a magnitude now we don't need a y magnitude all right so then we have to come down and actually define the point moment that we're applying so again we'll just copy the same structure we'll say now in our particular case the moment is applied at the very end of the beam and so its location is 17 meters and its magnitude it's clockwise so it's going to be positive uh, and so the magnitude i think we said was 50. all right then so and we're going to run this code or the first time we run it we're going to take out the influence of the point load we just want to focus on what the moment is doing and uh, now the next thing we need to do is down here calculate the number of point moments and that's going to be again for our test later on to see if we actually have to take any point moments into account so let me see test for point moments to consider so that should be let me just run this down from the top that should be uh, everything done in terms of our initializations next we can come down and actually start thinking about uh, defining a function that's going to actually calculate the reactions as a result of that moment and just implement the calculations that we just talked about so let's generate a new cell here and move it up and generate another new cell we'll turn this guy into a markdown cell Okay, so define a function to calculate the reactions due to point moments, that's okay. So let's just define this function then. So I'm gonna use the function definition keyword. I'm gonna call this reactions underscore PM. And again, it's gonna take um, the, the number or yeah, the number that identifies a particular moment that we're, um, we're interested in. So let's extract out the position of that moment. So that's gonna come from point moments and it's going to be we're going to take out the number at row n and position zero because that's going to be the location let's extract the moment magnitude so again same idea it's just this time we want the number in the second column of that row and then we can go ahead and calculate the lever arm so the lever arm for vb is then going to be as we've said previously b minus a and now we can just go ahead and calculate the reaction at B. So VB is going to be, what did we say? We said it was M divided by the actual lever arm of VB. That's fine. And then we said that VA was going to be equal to minus, uh, let me see, minus VB. Yeah, okay. All right, let's just add in a few notes here. All right, and the last thing we want to do is return out of this function the values VA and VB that were calculated. All right, that is our function defined. Now we need to build our loop that we're going to use to cycle through each of the point moments that's applied in exactly the same way that we did this here. So let's generate our cells with Alt-Enter, a new code cell. Let's shift it up, generate another one. We'll put a title into this guy. So the title here is going to be cycle through all point moments and determine the reactions. All right, so we're going to follow the same structure. Let me start off by defining, now let me see how will I do this. Yeah, let's start off by defining P, PM record. Okay, because we want to take account or we want to record the reactions that were generated as a result of each individual moment that got applied. Now, PM record, there's going to be no horizontal reaction generated as a result of an applied moment. And so we only need to be recording two numbers, VA and VB. So that's going to be zero and two. Next, we're going to have our test to only execute the following code if there are indeed point moments applied to our structure. So if NPM is greater than zero, that's fine. All right, now we can cycle through each of those moments. So we'll say for n and uh, p in enumerate point moments. All right, I probably could have changed that p to an m, might have made more sense, but I left it as a p, so we'll leave it as a p. So now we're going to say, we're gonna call our function that we just wrote. So we'll say reactions underscore pm, let's pass it in n, the, uh, the moment that we're interested in currently. And we'll say that that, the, what gets returned from that function is going to be our VA and our VB. We'll assign it to those variables now. And now it's the exact same idea, right? We're going to basically update. Let's copy this code here. We're going to update our record. This needs to be changed to PM record. Uh, and that also needs to be changed to PM record. And this needs to be changed here to VA and VB. So store reactions for each point moment. All right, that should be everything, except except we need to add our reactions to our overall record again. Don't forget that step. So we'll say, in fact, let's just copy. Let's copy all this. 
and let's delete this one. We don't need that because we're not calculating a horizontal reaction anymore. And that should be us done. So now we should be able to work out what our reactions are. So let's uh, let's run the code. So let's run that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy. Now, let me see. Let's try running this from here. Minus five and five. Excellent. So those are actually the correct reactions for A and B. Brilliant. So that's the first half of the job done. The next thing to do is work out the shear and moment uh, as a result of this, uh, this applied moment. So let's come down here and generate ourselves a new code block. And as usual, shift it up and put in a heading into this guy here. So again, what's this one going to be? This is going to be where we do our, our version of this, but for point moments. So I'll tell you what, let's just copy this here and just amend it. So what have we got? Define a function to calculate the shear forces and bending moments due to point moments this time. Okay, excellent. So what's this function going to look like? Well, it's going to look almost identical to this function here. Before, uh, instead of just copying and pasting straight away, let's just let's just define the function. So we'll call this shear underscore moment underscore pm. And again, this got passed in n. And let me see. All right, let's extract off the same way, the same idea here, right? We're going to extract off some data. So I'm going to, just so it's easier to get a hold of, uh, for example, the location of the moment. That's going to come from point moments. And that's going to be n0. So that can be location of point moment. Then let's have fy doesn't make sense. Let's change that to m. That's going to be one. So that's the point point moment magnitude. And then VA and VB, they can almost be the same, except that needs to be changed to a PM. And that needs to be changed to a PM. So we're reaching into the correct bucket of reactions. And let's just be consistent here and change the comment. All right, so now that we have easy handles on our data, we can move on to the next step. Now, the next step was going to be the exact same as this here. In fact, let me copy all of this now and then start thinking about what needs to change. Now, where are we? We're in here. Okay, so cycle through the structure and calculate the shear force and bending moment at each point. At each point, that's fine. All right, um, let me see. Moment and moments that's fine all right so now we're cycling through each x location right we're initializing the value of shear and moment at that particular location to zero and then in the exact same way that we did previously we're working out okay well what would the moment be due to the reaction at a uh, and that happens to be the exact same as when we did it previously what would be the shear and moment generated due to a reaction at b and again same as we had previously now this is where we have our slight change if x is to the right if our cut is to the right of where our moment is applied, right? Well, we don't have to do anything to the shear. We can leave that as it is. And we can then simply say the moment is going to be the moment. Instead of all of this, it's just going to be minus M, okay? The value of the moment that is to the left of our cut. And let me just update this note so that it makes a little bit more sense. Okay, so calculate the moment influence of the point moment. And I'm saying it has no effect on shear. All right, and then just store that shear moment again, same as we had previously. So that should be our function doing the calculation for us. Now we just need to cycle through. Again, generate a new cell, put in a heading, and cycle through all point moments and determine the shear and moment. Okay, so now we can say if n pm is greater than zero so if we have moments to consider we'll then cycle through each one okay and let's call our function our function was shear underscore moment underscore pm we passed it in n and we're assigning the output of that function to shear and moment variables and then we just have to update the shear force and the bending moment and that's going to be the exact same line of code or lines of code here and let's just be consistent with our notes. So that will be point moment and point moment. Excellent. All right. So that should be everything we need to do to calculate the shear force and bending moment diagram for any point moments that are applied to our structure. So let's just see if that has worked. 
All right, so I'm going to collapse down the bits of code that we didn't write in this lecture. So we wrote this guy, we wrote this guy, and let me see what else. Okay, so this is what we did in this lecture. We defined this function, reactions PM. We wrote this little loop here to call reactions PM for every applied moment, and we've calculated the reactions. Then we came down and we wrote this function to calculate the shear and moment at every point along our beam as a result of a particular point moment. And then we wrote this code to cycle through all of our point moments and call that function for each one. Right, let's just run this from the top and cross our fingers and hope that it works. Right, so of course we have, we have an issue. Ah, and I can see what it is. So here, this is again the perils of copying and pasting code. PM record doesn't have an index number two. Remember, that only has two columns. Previously for PL record, for the point loads, we had three columns because we had a horizontal reaction as well. But for the reactions due to point moments, we only have two columns, which means that should be a one instead of a two. Now, where is that? That's up at VB. So that's going to be in, where is it? Here we go. Okay, what have we got there? That should be one. So let's try running that again. Okay, excellent. So that's our shear force diagram. That makes sense because the reaction over at A here is uh, a five kilonewtons pointing down, which is gonna give us a negative five in shear. There's no forces coming along between the two supports A and B, and then the reaction over here brings us back up to zero again, that's fine. And think about what do we expect our bending moment diagram to be? Well, if this is a, is a straight line, we expect an incline straight line for, within this region in here, an incline straight line between A and B for a bending moment diagram. And of course, that's exactly what we have. All right then, and then the bending moment remains constant all the way across to the end until that 50 is applied at the end. All right, brilliant. So now we've uh, we've more or less wrapped up this section. In the next video, we're gonna come back and build in the functionality to take into account uniformly distributed loads. So we'll pick that up in the next video.